Hey everybody, welcome back to Magic Orthodoxy. My name is David and this is a Magic Review. Hey, today we're going to look at Float from Sans Mines. What is Float? Uh, basically, it's a utility device that you can stick in your wallet, uh, your hip pocket wallet, and uh, it'll enable you to float a card, float a business card, float something about that size, float your credit card, your driver's license, whatever, uh, and it's just with no setup at all. Like you'll, The spectators will literally watch an object float up out of your wallet. Uh, it's a great way to open uh, your magic routine, probably, and uh, it's a great way to introduce levitation into your close-up act. When I see what it looks like, this is it. Levitation is one of the most classic and iconic talked about magic illusions. Float takes a classic full-scale illusion and shrinks it down to pocket size. Having an illusion set sitting flat in your wallet, ready to amaze at a moment's notice. It's fun, easy to do, and fully attention-grabbing. With nothing extra to carry, that's you and your wallet. It works with any bifolding wallet style. Once you're set up, you are always ready to amaze. So get ready to float. All right, so that was Float from uh, the people down at Sands Mines. Couple questions we always ask about all of our reviews, and the first of which is, what is in the box? What's in the box? You're gonna get the DVD. DVD's eh, a little short of 20 minutes long, and you're gonna get the Float gimmick. Okay, so is it what I thought? Um, it's exactly what I thought. The way you watch the wallet open, the way you watch the mechanics of how the object rises, um, even though the commercial is only for, you know, they only show the levitation briefly, you still see the, the physics of it, and the physics makes logical sense in your head, and your logic puts it together. So it is what I thought. How are the angles? The angles are, uh, you really need to view this from above, okay? So you're holding the object below their eye line, having people like look down, so like in a circle probably, looking down, okay? Um, you're not gonna be standing and they be seated. That would be terrible, okay? It'd be better if you were seated and they were standing, okay? So that's your angle, okay? So not good, eye level surrounded, bad. Uh, another great thing to consider uh, would be lighting. And so you're using an element of magic that is familiar to some of you. And so it probably should be a little on the dark side or not as bright, not big bright fluorescent lights, okay? Not bright sunny outside. You want nighttime, you want bar lighting, restaurant lighting, nighttime, that's probably the best. Can it be inspected? Yes and no. The object that floated, the levitation object, can be inspected. I mean, once it levitates, you, you know, hand it out and say, look, there it is. Uh, but the wallet can't be inspected, in fact, if you watch the trailer, you'll notice that Jason ditches his wallet really quickly and says, here, you know, examine this. And I think as, whenever we do that as a magician, when we ditch something fast and hand something out and say, here, look at this, it immediately makes the spectator think that there's something fishy going on. I think they immediately say, wait, wh you know, wh why are you ditching that so quickly? And, and I know he wants to take the heat off of his wallet fast, but by removing it so quickly, it feels like a dirty little secret. And so, no, they can't inspect your wallet. Uh, they can only inspect the object that you make float. What's the overall quality and production value of the video? Uh, Sans Mines always makes very good videos. They're always high quality, they're always HD, they're always well shot, they're always good venues, they always have good mics. I think um, it is an overall well-made, beautiful looking DVD. Is the gimmick well made? Um, the gimmick has to be, let me just preface this, it has to be lightweight, okay? It's going in your wallet. So it has to be lightweight um, and it has to be thin because your wallet's gonna close up and has to go into your pocket. That said, when you make something that's lightweight and thin, the gimmick is gonna feel flimsy and cheap 
to you. It's going to feel very delicate. You're going to want to be very careful with it, which is odd because then you're sticking it in your back pocket and you're sitting on it. <laughs> Usually you think of things that you sit on as being a little bit more sturdy, a little bit more well-made. Uh, so it does feel thin. It does feel cheap. I haven't had mine break or tear or rip on me yet. So, I mean, that's a, that's a plus. Um, but just be warned, it's going to feel inadequate to you when you first get it. How much practice does it require? Uh, not much. I think a couple times in front of the mirror, uh, just filling out your angles, being wary of, you know, do you see the device or not? You might want to practice this on uh, another magician or a best friend or your spouse who already understands some of the working knowledge of magic, just so that you can kind of like feel out, okay, you know, can you see the gimmick? That, I think that would be the best thing because you're really going to want to practice your angles more than you're practicing the gimmick. The gimmick is self-working. The gimmick is easy. How much setup and reset is there? There is some initial setup. Uh, it's not exactly arts and crafts. We'll say that. It's not exactly arts and crafts, but there is some um, craftiness you have to do to your wallet. Um, I will say you have to have a black leather wallet. I think that's key. I think even a fabric wallet, it probably won't give you the action that you want. I think you're going to want a black leather wallet. So if you don't already own a black leather wallet, just know going in, you're going to have to buy one in addition to this trick. Okay? So black leather wallet first. Second thing you need to know is once it's in, it's in. Which means if this is now your everyday wallet, the float device is going to be there in full view all the time. So maybe you want to put this in one of your black gimmicked wallets uh, and add this trick to another wallet effect. I think that would be a great idea. Positives. What are the positives to float? You know, I've seen a lot of criticism uh, for this trick and I've seen a lot of criticism for uh, sans mines in general. But my thought is this, this shouldn't be a standalone trick, okay? And, I, and you shouldn't be thinking of this as a standalone trick. You should be thinking of this as a magic utility that will enhance other tricks or enhance a routine. This should be used in a routine along with other effects. Um, so this would be a great reveal of a card to impossible location or a written prediction or a trick that already has uh, a haunted theme. So here's what I would do. I would use float as part of a, a bigger routine. Say you're doing a, um, a levitation routine, okay? You, f you float a card in front of them, okay? Uh, you float a ring in front of them, and then you say, I, I can't control it, like everything around me floats. Pull out your wallet, open it, float a dollar bill, close it quickly and say, see, I, I, can't, I can't control it. And then it becomes just a, a trick amidst a bunch of other tricks, and you're, you're showing the same effect, right? It's the same trick. Everything's floating, so everything has the same theme, but you're doing all those tricks in a different way, and what that does is it takes the heat off of them because the spectator's thinking, well, maybe he's doing them all the same way, but you're not. You're using a different utility or a different device for each one, and so each trick is then counterbalancing the next, okay? So I think that would be a good way to do it. Another way to do it, I think, uh, would be a great card to wallet. So I already told you that you need a black leather wallet to do this trick. And I already told you that once you put it in, it's permanent. So put this into uh, one of your card to wallet wallets. Card to wallet wallets are usually black leather anyway. So uh, pick one of those, stick float inside of that. Put any random card in the float device. Do your trick, okay? Do your load, bring out your wallet, show float and then close it up and say something to the effect like we're catching the magic as it was happening. Did you notice that? The magic was happening right in front of you. Then open the wallet from a different direction and then pull your card out and reveal their signed card. Then float isn't the trick. Float is the thing that enhances the trick. Float just made your card to wallet better. You see what I'm saying? Don't do float as its own effect. Don't expect to walk up to a group of people and they're all talking and having a good time and you walk up and say, we want to see something cool and you open your wallet and the card floats and everyone freaks out. That's not going to happen. Okay? That is not going to happen. That's false advertising. When people freak out and they explode and they go, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. What they're reacting to is your entire presentation. The camera is picking up the, the last couple seconds of someone's routine. 
I would argue that in that commercial for Float, Jason had done a ton of tricks for them. He'd probably already done some levitation tricks for them, and this last one blew their mind because it was the crescendo of all the things he's been doing. You need to think of Float as a utility that's gonna enhance your magic. How will Float improve one of the tricks you already do? Think about wallet tricks, think about um, tricks that involve floating, and I think if you marry Float with something else like that, you know, I think it'll only enhance that trick. Negatives, all right, so what are the negatives to float? Um, like we say right here, there's negatives to everything. These are just the negatives that I see. They don't have to be the negatives that you see. Um, I think the movement is very obvious. The movement that you're doing, the movement of the wallet opening and the card rising, I think, like I said at the beginning, it makes a logical sense in your head. You see the physicality of it and your brain puts two and two together and says, oh, it's this. Um, it, it's, it's just like when you see somebody levitate something and you see their hand pull back and the object go towards their hand. The physics of it tells the person, oh, it's a string connected to his hand and his hand is making it levitate. Even though they can't see the string, their brain still makes the connection and that can be a bad thing, okay? You want their brain to break when they see this. You want their brain to say, that doesn't make sense, okay? And I think some levitation effects, a lot of levitation effects, make sense in the spectator's brain even though they don't know how you did it. Okay, and I think float is one of those things. The physics of it, the physicality of it um, is obvious. Uh, it has a mechanical feel to it, and, and you know, you push down, the object moves up. That's a very familiar, natural movement. And so it just feels too much like a pop-up book to me, and so that would be the negative. Is it worth your money? Uh, you get the DVD, and you do get the gimmick. Uh, it's $25. And like I said, the gimmick itself feels a little lackluster, but you need to decide, can float enhance the magic that you already do? Is there a trick that you can already think of right now that you think, man, I think float would make this other trick even better? And that's how I think you need to think of float, okay? You need to think of it as a utility that's gonna enhance your magic. Who would like this? Uh, street magicians, young magicians, uh, people that do shock magic, people that do joke magic, I think would definitely like Float from Sans Minds. All right, so that is my review for Float from Sans Minds. I wanna thank all the great people down at Murphy's Magic Supplies for providing this for me so that I could do a review for you. And if you wanna purchase your own, you can find it at your favorite Murphy's Magic dealer. Thanks, bye.